Okay, my attempt at duplicating the DA9 from scratch, you know, this little metal box and this little plastic box. Let me show you what's inside. It's pretty just pretty much just my board and the tuning capacitor. A connector in for the antenna, connector out for the signal to the radio. Then of course the DC power supply. It's a 15 volt board, so I have two nine volt batteries in series. Thank you to guitar amp people who have these nice little enclosures. Each one has an off off on off switch, but I only need one switch uh, to power it. The other one I can just leave on all the time. And that's pretty much what's inside. And this is what's inside a little plastic box. Just a six millimeter by 200 millimeter ferrite bar. Uh, it's winding going to a connector. Thank you to TI for throwing out these awesome little plastic boxes that are perfect for ferrite bars. You see the signal has just passed the three. Now that is not a very good ferrite bar, but some things just decide for themselves, it seems, what they want to be. And that ferrite bar works so well with that tuning capacitor that I just couldn't leave the two separate. But I did make the antenna part pluggable. This is the Stormwise Super Ferrite Bar. I have no idea what's inside of there, but it's huge compared to most uh, AM antennas you'll see. Not only is the signal louder, but it's higher on the signal strength meter. This is only calibrated zero to five, but it would be a, probably a good two S units higher on a true S meter. The thing is, it's not as good as a real DA9. So, it's all in the ferrite bar of the DA9. This part up here, if you can pick up one of these on eBay and you have any interest in long distance AM, this is what you need to get. I think the last time I looked, they were 350. Since it is the ferrite bar, don't even bother buying the one that doesn't have the bar with it because I've got the entire circuit on that circuit board and it doesn't duplicate the performance and the only variable is the ferrite bar.